Welcome back to Nanom. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some uh, cannabinoid type 1 receptors and some of the pharmacology associated with them. In this uh, entry list, in darker blue, this structure, we have the cannabinoid type 1 receptor and we have some ligands in different sites of the receptor. So this site up here in yellow is called a allosteric modulator site. And what it does is when a drug binds to an allosteric modulator site, specifically this one is called a positive allosteric modulator site, it basically actually changes how this thing in magenta binds to cannabinoid type 1 receptor. And so basically first the allosteric modulator in yellow binds, the shape of this site called an orthosteric site changes in such a way that it leads to higher affinity to this binding site. And we call that a positive allosteric modulator in magenta. Conversely with the other structure over here, oh, over here, get that out of the way. The other structure is slightly different. In the bottom pocket of this receptor, this is called an agopam site. So by itself, a drug binding to this site can lead to agonism, basically intoxication, or it can also have this positive allosteric modulation to the top site of cannabinoid type 1 receptor. And I think that's really interesting. One site can have two different pharmacological profiles leading to a vast array of effects. So let's break things down. Let's look at these a little bit simpler. So this compound right here is called GAT228, and this is the compound that bounds to that bottom site of CB1 receptor that acts as an allosteric modulator and also an agonist. And what you'll notice about this structure is it actually has a stereo center right here, which means it can have an R or an S enantiomer. Now let's look at its enantiomer. Right hand side in green, we have GAT228, which is the R enantiomer of the compound. And in the left hand side in yellow, we have GAT229, which is the S enantiomer. To in fact see that these compounds are enantiomers, let's look at them like this. If I take GAT228 and turn it like this, and then I stack, I overlay GAT229 right on top of it. What we can see is that, notice how the NO2 group, okay, is just a mirror image of the NO2 group in this structure, which is uh, be GAT229, GAT228. And then similarly with the, the uh, benzene ring, notice how it's just the mirror image of the benzene ring on the top, uh, this one being the structure of GAT229, and this one being GAT228. So what's really interesting about this is, you know, in pharmacology, it makes you have the realization that just because a compound is the an, an enantiomer of one other compound, it doesn't mean it binds to the same site. It's stereoselective, meaning that based on the enantiomer it is, it binds to a completely different binding site. And we just we basically just saw that with the cannabinoid type one receptor. So let's go back to that actually. You know, we just talked about this idea that binding sites are stereoselective. We saw that GAT228, which is this compound bound to the agopam site, and GAT229 are actually just enantiomers of one another. But because they're enantiomers, they have different three-dimensional shapes. And because of that, they bind to different sites on the cannabinoid type 1 receptor. Fascinating. So specifically, as we talked about, this site over here in yellow is that... Um, Allosteric modulator, specifically it's a positive allosteric modulator, means meaning it enhances the binding of an orthosteric ligand. In this case, we have CP55940 in here. So basically, the GAT229 will bind to CB1. It'll change the orthosteric shape, which will enhance the binding of um, CP55940, increasing the binding affinity. And the cool feature about GAT228 um, is it has these interesting hydrogen bonds. So the interesting feature about GAT229 is as we can see, it has two hydrogen bonds. 
So one of the hydrogen bonds is between the NO2 group or the nitro group and tyrosine 172 right here. And the other hydrogen bond is between the indole hydrogen and aspartic acid 176. And although hydrogen bonds generally aren't the strongest forces that keep um, light ligands or drugs bound to receptors, they do play an essential role in binding affinity. In this structure, we have GAT228 um, inside the agopam site, which can by itself, interestingly enough, produce agonism. So it can produce intoxication, but it can also change or modify the shape of the orthosteric site to act as a PAM. Kind of complicated pharmacology, but interesting. The cool feature, interesting feature about GAT228 is it's got this really beautiful dual um, hydrogen bond, okay, between the NO2 group, okay, of GAT228 and arginine 148. And then the other hydrogen bond is this one right here between the indole hydrogen of GAT228 and histidine, and histidine 154. And I will say, you know, because this structure does have more hydrogen bonding network than GAT229, the bonding affinity is actually about 20 kilocals per mole stronger um, between GAT228 and the agopam site than GAT229 at the, um, at the pure PAM site. Our group put out a paper and we looked at GAT228 in terms of uh, its role in reducing seizure activity in mice. And what we found is that when GAT228 um, binds to CB1 receptor at this site, it actually reduces seizures in an animal model of epilepsy. Um, specifically, it's a type of epilepsy called absence epilepsy that occurs in children. But we found that this drug is quite therapeutic. Um, as an anti-seizure medication. And, you know, we proved that in that paper that basically GAT228 binding to this site um, is the reason, is the sole reason responsible to that modulation of CB1 somehow is reducing seizure activity in animals. A current project that I'm working on as a PhD student is developing different ligands that can bind to the GAT228 agopam site, which is down here, because we believe that these compounds will actually be uh, therapeutic in terms of epilepsy. So let's talk about some of those compounds that I've been developing. So interestingly enough, um, what you might notice about this structure, this is very similar to GAT228. The only difference is, I'll kind of give you a hint, is if I turn it like that, do you see anything different about the structure? And if you don't, here it is. Inside this uh, six-membered ring right here, there's a nitrogen right here in blue. And basically, you can develop these compounds that are very similar derivatives of GAT228. And we call these types of compounds that are similar, we call them bioisosteers. So theoretically, they should act similarly uh, inside of an animal model, and more importantly, inside of the in silico receptor. So basically, we can look at certain replacements that are chemical equivalents, which might improve things like the solubility, it might get to the receptor easier, and more importantly, it might lead to you know lower uh, seizure activity. But for my project, I look at in silico, basically developing these ligands, and then I would hand this information off to an organic chemist, and they could maybe synthesize one of these compounds for me. So that's all I've got for you guys today, and um, I hope you enjoyed that video. Stay curious till next time.